Hey programmers, Alvin here. Right now what I want to do is walk you through this bracket matcher challenge. So if you want to follow along, what you can do is head down to the link in the description below where we'll have a link uh, to this specific challenge. That being said, let's jump right in. All right, so looking at the instructions here, what I want to do is write a function that takes in a string and return one or zero, indicating whether or not the string contains valid brackets, right? So if I look at the first example down below, if we look at this input string, it does have some parentheses uh, inside of it. And notice that the parentheses are not matched up correctly, right? The parentheses are not well formed because it looks like this, a last parenthesis over here is actually missing its opening pair, right? So in that scenario, our function should return zero because these are not uh, some valid parentheses, right? In another scenario, if we take this other uh, input string, it is actually the case that all of these parentheses have a correct matching pair. And so we should return one indicating that this string is totally okay. In the problem statement, they also give us a little heads up. They say that only parentheses will be used as the matching symbols. All right, so how should we go about checking if things match up? I think what we should do is really sketch out a strategy first, and then we can implement it in some code. So the key to solving this problem is to actually use a stack data structure. In our previous lesson, we described stacks as super useful for tracking a history, right? A history of steps. In this scenario, when it comes to verifying whether or not we have matching parentheses, we will need to remember or track a history of what opening symbols we've seen previously. And so for this reason, we'll find a stack uh, very useful. So just recall that when it comes to operating on a stack, we have two operations where I can push things to the top of my stack or pop things also from the top of my stack. And let's trace through how we might utilize one over here. So let's say the string I'm trying to verify is this one over here. So it's hello with some matching uh, parentheses, right? So in the long run, uh, this should return true or should return one uh, indicating that, hey, this string does have some valid uh, parentheses, right? And so let's start by consuming characters uh, of this string. All I'll need to do is iterate from left to right. And the first symbol I see over here is an opening one, right? And so what I'll do is actually add this as an item to my stack. So I add that opening uh, to the top of my stack and there it is because later on I need to remember and make sure that eventually I have a matching pair for that specific uh, opening parenthesis. Next iteration, I'm at the H. Since H is just a regular character, I actually don't need to do anything, right? So for normal characters, I won't need to manipulate the stack. Next iteration, I have another opening symbol and so I'll also add it to the top of my stack. Next iteration, I have E, so do nothing. Next iteration, I have L, also do nothing. And now I see a closing symbol over here, right? So if I see a closing parenthesis, that means that I should be matching up something that opened previously. So if I have this closing parenthesis, that means I should just pop the top of my stack because I've matched one of my opening parentheses, right? Cool, so now I have just popped something. And now I see another uh, opening symbol on the next iteration, which means I do another push. So there it is at the top of my stack. And now I hit L, do nothing. I see a closing parenthesis, which means I pop, right, the top of my stack. I see an O, do nothing. See a closing parenthesis, which means I should pop once again. And at this point, I've finished iterating through the entire uh, input string and my stack is empty, which means that everything is good, right? I've matched up uh, all of the symbols I needed to. A key thing to watch out for in the strategy is that we need to verify by the end of our iterations that the stack is actually empty, right? If I end up with any extra items uh, by the end of my iterations on my stack, that means that I didn't have enough closing uh, parentheses to match up all of the opening ones. Let's take a look at another example. Let's say I had this input string. We'll start by following the same strategy. So in the first iteration, I have an opening. So what I'll do is add that item to my stack. Now I see a closing parenthesis and I should pop it from my stack. And at this point, my stack is empty, but I still have some iterations to continue. If I go on to the next iteration, I see a closing a parenthesis, which means that I really would like to uh, pop something from my stack. But if nothing is present in my stack, then that must mean that this string is invalid, right? Notice that at this point, by the time I hit this third character, this third iteration, I've already verified that, hey, this string is not valid, right? There are no like other characters I can see down the line that would ever validate this string because there's nothing that actually opened uh, for this parenthesis over here, right? So I can actually do like an early return false or an early return zero uh, in this scenario. Let's say I had this string. Uh, if I consume characters of it, I start out with an opening 
a parenthesis, which means I add it to my stack. I hit H, do nothing. I hit I, do nothing. And at this point, I'm done uh, iterating through my entire string, but I actually have still one item on my stack. So that's a scenario where I return false or basically return zero, indicating that, hey, this was not a well-formed string. All right, so now that we have a good idea for the strategy we're gonna use here, let's go ahead and implement it in some code. So for the stack that I use over here, I'll go ahead and use a plain old array and just stick to using push and pop methods for it. So I'll just define my stack. And over time, I'm gonna be iterating through my input string. So I'll just write like a classic for loop that just iterates through every element of this string. Now that I'm iterating through every character of the string, I wanna check what the character is particularly, right? So I have those two special scenarios, right? I'll need to specifically check, hey, if this current character that I iterate through, if that character is a opening a parenthesis, then what I should do is push something onto my stack, right? So what I'll say is stack.push. And I guess in this scenario, it doesn't really matter uh, what type of symbol I, I push to the top of my stack. I'll just go ahead and push an opening parenthesis. Cool, to denote that, hey, you open something, you need to be sure to close it later on. And I have a one other specific character to check for. I'll check, hey, else if the character I'm looking at is a closing parenthesis, then that means I should do the opposite, right? That means I should be able to pop something uh, from my stack. But I need to write some additional logic here, right? It could be the case that there's nothing um, on my stack right now, right? If there's nothing on my stack, that was a scenario where I need to return zero here, right? Indicating that, hey, things did not go well, right? I kind of do not have a matching parentheses. And so what I'll check is, hey, if my stack is empty, so if stack.length, remember stack is just an array in this scenario, so I can use some normal array methods, as long as you don't really mutate uh, my array. So if my stack's length is zero, then you should return false or return zero here, indicating that you do not have uh, matching parentheses. And now in the other scenario, if my stack does have some things on it, then I'm allowed to pop something, right? So what I'll do is I'll just pop the top of my stack and I should be removing something. Cool, because I've just matched up a pair uh, of parentheses. Awesome, so this code is looking pretty good. I'm iterating uh, through my string. If the string is an opening parenthesis, I'll add it to my stack. Otherwise, if it's a closing parenthesis, I'll try uh, to pop something from my stack. But if there's nothing to pop, then return zero early. So I have my return zero scenario. Uh, where should I return one, right? Where can we actually say that, hey, this entire string is good to go? Well, that should be after we're done checking and consuming all the characters. So you'll want to do a late return over here and say return one, right? If you make it through this entire for loop and you never return zero, then by definition, the string does have all of its matching parentheses. So this code seems complete, but there's one small thing we should remember. Remember when we went through our little sketch of actually verifying uh, if a string has valid parentheses, we said that, hey, by the end of the for loop, uh, we should have an empty stack, right? So it's not the case that we should just automatically return one. You'll actually wanna be a little more specific here, right? You should only return one uh, if the stack is empty. So I'll write some ternary operation here. I'll say that, hey, if my stack by the end of this function has zero things, then I'm good to go. Uh, and I'll go ahead and return a one. Otherwise I'll return zero, right? So here I'm gonna return one if the stack is empty. I return zero if it's not empty. Now let's go ahead and run all of these test cases. So this will be running the test cases on the sidebar. So I get zero and one, and those uh, are correct. And now what I'll want to do is go ahead and run all of the test cases by submitting my code. Awesome, it looks like we passed all of the test cases for this problem. So before I let you go, let's talk about the efficiency of this algorithm. So in terms of the time complexity, we see that in our code, the main operation that we do is iterate through the string. So if we have a string of n characters, then that would require n iterations. That's actually all of the time that we use. When it comes to using a push and pop in our JavaScript language, those actually operate in constant time, right? And of course, this check at the very bottom is also running in constant time. So it looks like we have a O of N time complexity and also O of N space complexity because of the stack, right? In the worst case scenario, we'll have to put a basically a item on the stack for every character of the string if the string was composed of, let's say, a mostly parentheses, right? So overall, you're looking at O of N time and O of N space, which would be the optimal solution over here.
Awesome, so there we have it. That's our solution for this bracket matcher problem. This is a very, very uh, commonplace problem in interviews when it comes to utilizing the stack data structure. And again, really the reasoning behind why we find a stack useful here is because we need to remember what we've seen previously, right? A stack is really useful for remembering a history. In this case, we want to remember a history of the opening symbols that we've seen before.